So <laughs> another another uh, big newsworthy item was around our FIPS certification. We made an announcement that we were in process and now we've completed functional testing, which is very exciting. And I just wondered if you could talk a little bit about what that means for our federal customers and why it was important for us to do. Well, certainly. So the federal information processing standards, FIPS, and some other surrounding uh, requirements are very important to government procurements, right? And they, they actually stipulate capabilities that you have to have, and you have to have them certified by, by third parties. And so we're now through that process, which is very exciting for us. We've been in process for a period of time, which has allowed us to compete for federal government business and win federal government business and actually go into deployments, etc. But they only give you so much time to be in process. It's about 18 months. So now that we've completed this, we're able to establish that level of certification going forward, and it'll just allow us to be you know, that much more uh, compliant with a lot of these procurements, which are very central to protecting the digital assets of the federal government, both civilian and defense and intelligence. So it's a, an important milestone for us. Uh, clearly a huge marketplace, you know, a part of our market and our business. Because of the level of proactivity that we see in the large government agencies, they've been a big user of our system. And the, and the crypto module, do you want to talk a little bit about what that or, or what the encryption piece is about? Yeah, in this particular case um, for FIPS, uh, one of the requirements is just to be able to have uh, encryption for all the data that we're storing. You have to be able to define your encryption boundary, your crypto boundary, and that's what part of these standards are testing for. You have to be able to show that your development processes are, are producing uh, a system that is designed in accordance with those requirements. It's just, it really gets in deep into your whole your whole process as a software company and verifies that in fact um, you have good practices and that you are delivering systems that are protectable in this fashion. Got it. So why is the, I mean maybe it's asking the obvious question for the obvious answer, but why is the federal government so concerned about security information and and why are they such a target? Well, if you look at for example, the U.S. federal government it is the, the biggest employer, the, the biggest IT installation. Uh, it is hugely complex, uh, very diverse. The operational complexity that they're supporting in all of their missions and civilian processes is just immense. It's just hard even to contemplate. And so we all know that as IT installations get larger, they're harder and harder to manage, and of course they're harder and harder to secure. More tax services, uh, more information to protect, more users to be, be watching and to be making sure that are following good practices and things like that. And so the stakes are very, very huge. Uh, you can imagine that the federal government infrastructure produces a lot of events. And so they need partners uh, like SenseAge to keep up with all that data, to be able to filter the data and to help their resources to monitor it in a, in a way that is efficient. And so that's been a key reason why, why we've been uh, very successful in that particular space. Not to mention the fact that the federal government is a huge target. So not just for bragging rights, but increasingly in, in the context of cyber war, cyber terrorism, even cyber crime, uh, they are the big player that you know hackers, hacktivists, cyber criminals are after. And so the uh, the stakes are really high, and, and so the need for very very high levels of protection are there. And they have amazing efforts uh, that they undertake to 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 engage in this level of protection. But it's an ongoing thing, right? It's, you're, never, you're never done with security. And so when you're managing that level of operational complexity, you really have to stay on top of your game, um, even if you've done a great job, you know, you know, for years and years. And it sounds like insider threat has become a huge topic in the last probably six months for many reasons we all know. Um, and are you seeing a lot of that in, in some of the discussions you're having with customers? Well, sure. I, I would say, you know, the WikiLeaks thing was a very, very challenging uh, very, very aggressive journalism deviant form, right, that, that ha is out there, right? And it, what it's done is it's put, I think, a value. It's placed a, uh, sadly, a, a high value on inside information. And the practice of, of either selling that information or, or, or sharing it for whatever the context is very, very threatening. And what it means is that people on the inside who have access to this data um, could have access to um, you know, opportunities to sell it, uh, which is which is crazy. But you know, these sorts of things, internal internal uh, crime, fraud, these things have always existed. It's just a very big digital efficient form that's emerging, and the insider threat is part of part of all that. We see that not just in the federal government. I mean, that's true of all uh, enterprises that have lots of information to protect. Um, it's true in, in in all walks of life as we see, and so. 
you look at the studies and, and the, the, the mix between insiders and external you know, uh, threat vectors, it seems to go up and down depending upon the study. But both are very, very important because the insiders have that, that direct access and uh, the external folks, of course, are, are, you know, don't have an employment situation to ponder that could be at risk by, by taking advantage of these compromises. Uh, we do see a mix out there. And you mentioned large volume of data. I know we're in the midst right now with a, a POC that involves a lot of data. Can you talk a little bit about sort of what sorts of volumes we're dealing with when it comes to uh, well, our customers? Yeah, so it used to be that it was a lot of um, it was a you get a merit badge for doing terabytes and you know terabytes are passe now um, We're into petabytes and that is even challenging for an established database or an established I didn't even know it was a word till I came here Petabyte in <laughs> fact most dictionaries don't you know, call it a misspelling, but it's real P-E-T-A Byte, but um, it's huge. I mean it's a, a you know a thousand terabytes makes up a petabyte um, we're now seeing multiple petabyte scenarios where large organizations have decided that they want to address a scope that's commensurate with their footprint, right? Mm -hmm. If you're big, you can find petabytes of data, of mm -hmm. event data. Mm -hmm. And so no one in our category, other than SenseAge, has the ability to scale to that level. And frankly, data warehouses don't have the ability to handle time-stamped data of this volume in any way that, that is um, loadable, and analyzable in the time frames that we're talking about. So you got to get it all in on a daily load, right? In between also serving up queries for your standing reports, your ad hoc queries, your investigations, all those things. So it's put us at the heart of a very hard math problem to solve where purpose-built technology with high compression rates which save you money on storage is, is so valuable now if you want to tackle the scale and scope of really monitoring your data. Got it. So um, a lot you know, along the lines of talking about sort of the federal space and the scary things that happen there. What, what do you think about the Jason Bourne movies? Do you like those? Great movies. <laughs> nice franchise. Is another one coming out? We'll have to look for it. <laughs> I don't know, but I think, I think yeah, Matt Damon's pretty pretty great. Yeah, well, he's So if he's, we had a, a spokesperson, I think it, it could can be we, him. Can we hire Matt? I think it'd be awesome. Oh, I would certainly find that. <laughs>